pick up my five legals. Inakwe, Wainui boat ramp. Visibility is looking pretty good. Let's hope Tangaroa is going to look after me today. Keep me safe, Tangaroa. Let's do the mahi. Heading out on this lovely hot day, the ocean was deceptively rough. You can't really see it in the video, the 360 camera doesn't do it justice, but it was very rough, so I didn't go too far. Alright, this is our dive location. Now for those of you that don't know, people who wear open cell wetsuits usually use soapy water to lubricate the inside of the wetsuit when putting it on. Do not mistakenly drink said soapy water. Ha! Fuck's sakes! Do not drink your soapy water! Oh my god! <coughs> oh, crikey! Like an idiot, I just opened up that chili bin and blindly grabbed the closest <coughs> bottle that there was there to, to me, which was the soapy one! Oh, I tell you, it didn't taste very good. It only took about a second, and my face started grimacing with the knowledge that I was drinking conditioner. Now this is one of those dives where actually it was a lot clearer in the water than what you're actually seeing. I mean it looks pretty murky doesn't it, but actually I think that's just the um, DJI Osmo camera not really picking up fantastic clarity in the water because uh, the clarity that I was seeing was amazing. Uh, it could also be due to the uh, amber coloured lens that I had on my goggles. I got a new set of goggles with a real high, you know, high quality piece of glass on them. But, you know, hopped off of the boat there and spent probably a good five or ten minutes just having a look around. Um, it's, it had been so long since I'd been into water this clear and beautiful that I was really just wanting to just swim around for a while and enjoy it. 
and I, I suppose it's nothing special to look at when you're watching the video here but when you're there in the moment and you're in that beautiful pristine clear water it's just magical it's just amazing saw a few little fish hanging around a few banded wrasse and some uh, kawa I didn't, didn't actually catch any of them on camera And <laughs> how does the saying go? I spy with my little eye many little things down there that begin with P found the power so I was having a look around and I saw this great big rock there and I thought well let's have a look at that great big rock now I'm so used to going out power diving and struggling to find a legal size one imagine my amazement when the very very first power that I pull off the rock is legal and it's like oh ho, 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 okay okay so I pull off the second one, uh, the second one's a bit small, so the second one's got to go back. And then I start kind of processing this in my head and I'm thinking, well actually there's going to be a whole bunch of legal power on this rock because there's quite a few of them hiding around on this rock. So I put that one back and I think to myself, oh, I'm going to have to swim back over to the boat and get my catch bag. Now what I had done is I had hung my catch bag off of the side of the boat, thinking that, oh, I'm probably not even going to need it. I'm only going to find one power or two powers or something, because that, that's what I'm used to finding. And uh, so yeah, swim on back to the boat and get the catch bag. Had to negotiate my way around the boat here and uh, wasn't quite sure what to do with the power so we ended up just throwing it on the front of the boat. Now the catch bag is a simple apron like device with a pocket on the front and to be honest it's fiddly, fidgety to actually put it back on when you're in the water. So I struggled for about five minutes just getting the catch bag on whilst in the water. Anyway. Let's just swim and find some power.
I was doing so well that I didn't want to stop. It was actually at the point where I was finding up to 6 power and 7 power and I knew that if I kept on looking I was going to find more and more and more. Like I said, you know, when you, when you finally find them, it feels like such a luxury to have the choice of you know whichever ones you want when you find a whole bunch like that and you've worked so hard to get to that point where you've f tried to find them you know because all of the other shore dive locations that I've been to where you can just drive to you're not going to find power that illegal size because all the other divers have been in there and taken them all and that's just been my experience <laughs> But I kept on going around this rock because I've, I've, for some reason I was just in love with this rock and I just swam around and decided to go and dive down a few times and have a look around the bottom, you know, just in case there was some really, really big giant power at the base or maybe there was some crayfish down there or maybe there was some mussels that I'd missed or, you know, whatever. Just keeping on swimming, keeping on diving up and down, just keep on having a look, you know, and this is me not wanting to get out of, the, out of the water, this is me just having such a great time diving. I had also lost count at this point too of exactly how many power were actually in my catch bag. I knew I had five or six or seven. Oh, not even sure. But at some point you've got to tear yourself away. At some point you've got to say, okay, I've got what I came for. It's time to swim on back and unload my weight belts and hop back up on the front of that boat. And this is why I bought this True Kit Discovery, so you can launch yourself on the front of the boat. I struggled with this the first couple of times I ever did it, but after a couple of times, it's not too bad. It's not too hard. I can do it. Successful power dive. Well, this is the first time I've been able to go out and get five legals. And I've actually got six here right now, but the smallest one's going to go back because five's the limit here.
Finally got my five legals. The court Matt Watson that is one big bowl of deliciousness. begins the arduous process of <laughs> packing up the boat. And someone else has just arrived because I'm about to pack up. <sighs> Setting up the boat and then packing it up, that's the most difficult, tiring, time-consuming part of doing this. Alright, this is my little guide here to Shucking Power. I've got five power here and I want to caution you it's going to be a bit of a messy job power bleed and they bleed a lot black blood when you shuck them you want to jam that MPI knife in to the narrow end the thin end of the shell you want to cut that adductor muscle which is the big muscle in the center of the power let's see it again just jam it in there in the center and then Pull the foot away from the guts. You then want to discard the guts and uh, the shell too if you don't want to keep the shell uh, or you can pull out the guts from the shell and you can keep the shell and clean the shells. I warn you it can be a little bit messy and you're going to be washing your hands a lot and washing that cutting board quite a lot as well. You can see the MPI knife there. It's dirty. Those guts, put them in the green, but you don't want those hanging around. And those are your beautiful shells. Now, the, probably the most messiest part is getting those teeth out. At the top of the Blackfoot power there, I usually put a V-shaped incision in there with the knife. You don't have to do that. The main thing is to get the teeth out. You can do it by just jamming your fingers in and feeling around and pulling them out. It's always a bit messy and you can see how much the power is bleeding. It's, it's a messy affair from start to finish. But once you get them out, you've got your power. You can soften them, soften them by putting, putting them into some hot water, some boiling water. And yeah, clean that cutting board. You're going to be cleaning that cutting board a lot. So uh, Willie from Deep South Productions uh, had a problem with his GoPro recently. He had a GoPro Hero 3 and the uh, protective plastic case failed on him and the entire GoPro filled up with water and the water killed the GoPro. And so he asked for help and he said, can anyone, you know, donate a GoPro? Took our GoPro out too yesterday and um, 
lost all our underwater footage GoPro uh, housing, waterproof housing filled up with water water got all inside the GoPro so we don't have any underwater footage which is ratchet but if anyone out there who's got a spare GoPro and they want to contribute to the channel leave us a message in the comments so I had a GoPro Hero 4 Silver and hadn't been using it for a while, sort of an extra camera, so I said, hey, you can have my GoPro. So uh, I posted it down to him. Also, we got a new GoPro um, that we're going to try out. Um, thanks to uh, Jamie uh, from Kiwi Kai Moana. Um, thank you, Jamie, bro, for sending us um, that GoPro. So we're going to put it to the test. And uh, he came up to Christchurch and um, dropped off something in return. I didn't get a chance to um, see him because I had to go to work. But uh, yeah, he dropped off some fish and some um, frozen mince power. I've still got some. So thanks very much to Deep South Productions. Here's a little montage of uh, making uh, minced power patties. For this recipe, you're going to need one cup of minced power, a small onion finely chopped, half a cup of parsley and mint finely chopped, one lemon, half a cup of self-raising flour, one egg, olive oil for cooking, and lemon wedges on top. Now, as it is with all cooking, you end up doing a little bit of improvising. Um, I didn't have mint. Uh, we did have parsley, so we didn't use mint. Everything else I did have, and this is how it came out. We had uh, very sort of thick power fritters. I tell you what, they taste better than they look. Whenever you make a power anything, anything out of power, it always looks black because Blackfoot power is black. Mmm, but yum yum yum, these tasted better than they look. I'm gonna eat all. <laughs>